Uh, welcome, everyone, to uh, connecting everything, uh, everywhere, um, all at once with Lippy2P. As you can see on this slide, I think we beat the record of most people involved in a single talk. Was there any other? <laughs> so I'm standing here, right? But this has really been a big team effort. That's what I'm trying to say. OK, cool. Before we talk about connecting things, let's first talk about Lippy2P. Um, I assume most people here are familiar uh, with Lippy2P, so I'll just walk through over this really quickly. It's a peer-to-peer -peer networking library. Uh, there's one specification, and then that specification is written, uh, implemented in many different languages, like Go, JS, Rust, NIM, C++, Java, uh, and so on. And uh, it implements a bunch of low-level features, um, like transport protocols, encryptions, uh, authentication uh, around transport protocols, uh, mechanisms like hole punching. And then once we have this base layer, we can then build higher-level protocols on top, like, for example, Academia DHT or Gossip Sub or uh, protocols like BitSwap. And um, the big wish or the big statement is uh, all you need to build peer-to-peer -peer applications. Okay, when we talk about connectivity, what I usually do is I pull up this uh, very colorful table of um, protocols that you need to connect things. And then I got the feedback that this is not very entertaining. Um, so then I rewrote my slides. And um, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna talk about a movie and then I'm gonna be really sneaky and then talk about lippy p okay? so. You here has uh, watched the movie Everything, uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Won a couple of Oscars and things like that. Okay. Cool. Okay. So what I think is that, um, well, what's the movie about? It's about a bunch of people traveling through the universe, right? And um, what I think, what my suspicion is, is that they're actually using lippy to pee under the hood. And today I'm going to prove very thoroughly that they're using lip to be under the hood. Okay, so um, how am I going to prove this? Well, I'm going to showcase a small application um, called lip to be chat. Uh, there are not enough chat applications out there yet, so we definitely need a new one. Um, and it's this lippy to chat application, a peer-to-peer -peer chat application. And through this, we're going to demonstrate that in the movie, everything, everywhere, all at once, they have actually been connecting everything, which are browsers, non-browsers, uh, phones, uh, laptops, and so on, everywhere in public networks, non-public networks, all at once using lippy to Cool. Uh, folks ready for this? Now comes, now comes the sneaky part, right? Where <laughs> from now on we just have gray slides. <laughs> okay, all right. So we want uh, a chat application, right? And we want this to be distributed. So the first thing is that we're going to do is we're going to spin up a Rust LibreDB server somewhere, right? It's a publicly reachable, uh, easy scenario. And then given that it's quite alone out there by itself, uh, we're going to also spawn another server, which is GoLibreDB. They're talking with each other, uh, not very hard to connect to servers. They have full connectivity. You have access to your UDP and TCP sockets. So not a lot of trouble here. OK, so let's add some complexity. And now we actually want to chat with those two servers from my laptop here. OK, so what we're going to do uh, use for that is we are going to use Quick to connect from my laptop uh, to one of those Rust LibreDB servers. Uh, to the Rust LibreDB server and later on also to the Go server. Um, Quick in LibreDB has been there forever. A uh, small caveat, it has been there forever in Go LibreDB. Uh, we shipped it recently in Rust LibreDB and there's more work in the other implementations. And what it allows us to do is connect a non-browser to a non-browser. Why I'm saying non-browser? Well, anything where you have access to UDP and TCP sockets. I'm uh, happy to go into details about that later on. All right, so obviously I'm going to demo all of this. Um, so what I have here is, yeah, my laptop. And then um, I'm going to start the Go node. And ha ha, ta da, um, the Rust peer actually sent us a message. And what we can do here is um, send a message back. Right? Cool. That was my talk. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, <all right. laughs> Um, yeah, thanks whoever is in the chat application already. <laughs> okay, so we have been hacked, but it doesn't matter, we can move on. <laughs> um, so now we have the laptop connected to the rest of the PV node, right? And you're kind of like, oh, this is not really cool, like connecting a laptop to a server, great. Um, I'll add a little bit more to this, uh, which is another laptop. and. Uh, like this. And what we can do actually with Quick um, and also on TCP is connect two laptops with each other, right? Even though they're both behind NATs and firewalls, right? So we can do a technique called hole punching to then interconnect the two. And this I'm just not going to showcase today because we're focusing on other things, but there are other talks previously uh, which we showcased this one. Okay, cool. All right, now um, all of that complexity, let's introduce a very big one, namely a browser. Right? And on that browser, we're gonna uh, run JS Liberty P. And now, given that the talk is called Connect Everything Everywhere All at Once, uh, we actually wanna connect this JS Liberty P node. Okay. So um, what we're gonna do first is connect the JS Liberty P node running in a browser to the Rust Liberty P node. And we have one small problem, the Rust LibreP node, I've been, or we have been lazy to set this up properly with a TLS certificate. So the Rust LibreP node doesn't have a proper domain and it doesn't have a um, signed certificate. So the browser would usually never allow a connection to the Rust LibreP node. It would always need a signed certificate within the browser's trust chain. But what we can actually do with the LibreP WebRTC Direct uh, protocol that builds on top of the browser's WebRTC stack, is connect to this public server, this Rust Liberty B node, even though that Rust Liberty B node doesn't have uh, a signed certificate. Now, uh, in case you say like this is super insecure, like we build uh, encryption and authentication and so on on top of that, as like everything in Liberty B is always encrypted and authenticated. Okay, cool. So let's do that. Um, so for that, I have this cool application here, the Universal Connectivity Chat app. And hopefully, ta-da, um, this is now running JSLib2P in my browser, right? And what we can see here on this line, um, kind of hard for everyone, but what it says there is wherever C direct. So what we actually did uh, is this laptop with JSLib2P connected to the Rust LibreP server, even though that server doesn't have uh, um, a signed certificate or uh, so if I get within the trust chain of the browser. Okay, cool. Um, well, this is easy. I can then go to the chat and then, uh, I should probably do this like this. And then, <laughs> thank you, whoever this <laughs> I can chat uh, with this anonymous person that is probably sitting somewhere over there. <laughs> and I can say, hi, go node, because no one else knows the URL yet. Right, and um, this should then, yeah, ta-da, uh, show up also on my Go node. So actually, as you can see, my JS node is somehow connected to the Go node earlier, right? That's also running on my laptop. Okay, all right, so we have a web to to connect, direct connection now. Obviously, the arrow to the Go Liberty P node is missing over there, right? So let's do that one as well. And for that, we can use the Shiny Web Transport protocol. Um, building on top <laughs> um, the Shiny Web Transport protocol um, from the JS Liberty P browser to the Go Liberty P node. And again, uh, Web Transport um, allows us to make a connection to a remote node, even though that remote node is not within the trust chain of my browser. Right? Okay, cool. So if I go back to my chat application, um, I can actually see here that it already did that. Uh, it connected to the Go node. And <clears throat> what you can see here, I'll make this, <clears throat> sorry, uh, make this bigger. Uh, we connected over UDP, Quick, and Web Transport on top of running on top of Quick uh, from my browser to the Go node um, out there. Okay, cool. Uh, what are we going to do next? Now let's add even more complexity to this. And let's add yet another node to this. And let's add yet another JS node to it. And this is again running in the browser. And now you're again are missing a link. 
right, between JS libid v and JS libid v. Wouldn't it be cool if the two browsers could actually connect to each other? All right, so for that, we have uh, the libp WebRTC protocol, again, building on the browser's WebRTC stack. And this allows us to connect the two browsers with each other, um, and in the idea case, even hole punch between them. Um, and I'm gonna showcase this as well, hopefully in this case. Um, so again, and then the node, it will connect to the bootstrap node um, to both of them actually, and eventually it will also, ta-da, connect to the browser, so the third connection. And now what I can do here is, hello browser A, and that should now <laughs> show up in the chat. Um, cool, so we connected to two browsers, and at this point we have connected everything within our whole chat application uh, across all the many nodes. Cool, and now, uh, given that no one has seen this chat application ever before and no one has ever used it, you can now all use it. Um, so uh, grab your phones, uh, your laptops, and so on, and you can go to this URL, or go directly, not through the QR code, and then actually use uh, the new best chat application ever. Um, Right now, we don't, small disclaimer, we have a tiny bug on Firefox, so you'll have some trouble with Firefox, uh, but if you use Chrome or if you use Firefox in, I would say, a week, we'll actually have that resolved as well. Yeah, and now you can use that as a, as a chat application from now on throughout your entire life. Um, cool, what is next? Um, well, as I mentioned, we have this small bug fix, right? Um, in, in our libp2b WebRTC stack uh, for Firefox. Um, we want to get WebRTC direct, so from a browser to a public server node into go libp2p. Um, we, once uh, Firefox itself uh, supports the web transport protocol, um, every, every browser out there can connect actually, uh, or the majority of browsers can connect to go libp2p nodes. Um, eventually, we want to add web transport support to Rust libp2p. Um, even though we still have to work a lot on our quick stack and Rust libp2p, so that's not happening anytime soon. And then also eventually we want to have WebRTC browser to private. So to add even more complexity to this huge matrix, we want to be able to connect from a browser to a go libp2p node, even though that go libp2p node is behind an ad or firewall. Cool, then um, obviously uh, we want to add emoji support. Um, then after we shipped emoji support, we'll ship the feature on how to travel through universes. Um, and then lastly, we'll add ZigLibidP to <laughs> this entire thing. <laughs> and then really have everything connected everywhere all the time. Cool, um, this work is all in public and we actually already have uh, uh, an external contributor uh, contributing to this universal connectivity app. So I'm, I'm very sure that this chat app is really taking off at this point. Um, and yeah, he ported, he actually joined multiple community calls at this point and he ported all his patches to, to our stack, which is wonderful. Um, where can you learn more? Uh, well, you all have this, uh, you all scanned the QR code, right? So you have that. Then if you want to know what you're actually running on your phone there, um, this is public on libp2p slash universal connectivity. Um, then on connectivity.lipidupi.io, you find all the details about all the different transports. Um, a lot nicer displayed than my uh, earlier matrix in uh, gray. And then lastly, all the protocols that I talked about today are fully specified, and you find them on lipidup slash specs. Cool, that's all from my end. Uh, thanks for joining, um, and yeah, happy chatting on the new chat app. <laughs> Happy to take questions. So Max, if, if I was an auditor, was there any, is, was there anything you were covering over in this, in this demo or in the universal connectivity app? Like, is there any, any magic that we're, any, yeah, anything we're covering over or is this all legit? Ah, <laughs> you don't trust this? <laughs> I'm, just, just, I'm just poking it. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so um, at this point, 
uh, we well, obviously we have smaller bugs, right? Like in the UI and so on uh, around how this actually works. But mm -hmm. at this point, like you actually have pure Rust libidp connecting to Go libidp and JS libidp, uh, all at least in master or release. Yeah. Cool. And if I can ask one yeah. more. Uh, we, you've, you talked about web transport and WebRTC. Yeah. I guess why would I use one over the other? And are there any caveats? Yeah. Um, so whenever you can use web transport. Um, because web transport builds on the a lot newer quick stack and thus gives you a lot more performance and uh, just for example connection establishment way faster or proper stream multiplexing and so on um, but then as a fallback you can use webrtc direct which allows you the same capabilities but on the older webrtc stack what browsers support yeah uh, web transport i think at this point chrome or chromium and then firefox in nightly A uh, quick question about um, other transports like uh, BLE or other near field uh, yeah, trans connectivity. Uh, yeah. Can you give us an update on where those are? Uh, I don't think we have had any updates on this, like in the sense that most focus has always been on the internet protocol stack. Um, there has always been community members popping up with like Bluetooth and things like that, but I don't think we have made any bigger progress on anything that is run not running on IP within the larger LibPDP implementations. I have a question. I think it's on. Oh, OK. Uh, I have a question around uh, WebRTC. I think I remember seeing, reading, whatever, uh, that signaling servers are sometimes like involved with WebRTC connections. Um, They're what, sorry? Signaling servers. Yeah. They're needed? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so even in your case, uh, you need some signaling service. So is there in this diagram, essentially, is there something else? Or does one of the, the P2P nodes uh, do the signaling? How, how does that part work? Yeah, OK, cool. Let's dive into this. So um, in the case of WebRTC Direct, we can actually uh, get around without stun and turn. Right? So we don't need any signaling, and we don't need stun. Uh, this is really cool, and this allows us to establish a connection. Like otherwise, you have a chicken and egg problem, right? Like, um, where where is your peer to peer part if you all depend on the same signaling server, right? And without a signaling server, how do you establish the first peer to peer application, right? But the cool thing about WebRTC is that it actually allows us to make that very first connection to a public node, and then from there we can use this public node. We don't need to use turn. Um, we can instead use pure libp2p. libp2p has a relay protocol. And instead of using um, the official turn, we can use that relay protocol instead. Now, a small caveat, uh, so signaling is peer-to-peer, -peer, but uh, the WebRTC browser stack still needs stun servers, right? So right now, you could either provide your own stun server um, or use one of the, the bigger ones out there. But the important part is that if the two of us want to connect over WebRTC, we don't need to use the same stun server. So you might just use any other server. So it doesn't introduce any centralized infrastructure in that uh, moment. OK, so essentially, so essentially you would have the signaling servers, mm -hmm. but effectively they're they can Not be any libp2p node out okay. there. And actually, so for example, in the IPFS uh, network, we have every public node act as a limited relay server. This is not a problem for the public IPFS nodes because it's very limited and very restricted in the sense what you can do. But this enables anyone uh, not public to use those servers to transfer very small signaling bytes, basically. And we can make use of that without, again, having centralized infrastructure. All right, cool. If two browsers connect over uh, web transport and they want to get a message, uh, they, they connect to a server over web transport yeah. and they want to get a message to each other, yeah. that would presume that there's a relay uh, going through the server? Or you use a gossip protocol. Like in this demo, we are actually also using gossips up, uh, which is a, a publish subscribe uh, protocol. And in this case, they both connect to the Rust LibDB node. And this way, in case they don't have a direct connection to each other, and like in case WebRTC, for example, doesn't succeed, they can either make a relayed connection or they can actually gossip the messages across. Does that make sense? OK, thanks. This adds a lot of complexity. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
So Max, you said gossip sub is used in this particular example. How is peer discovery happening? Peer discovery right now? Ah, okay, all right. Um, so this Rustly VB node is running the Kademlia protocol. And as soon as one of them joins it, uh, it will do a random walk, it's called, and will discover other peers. So for example, it will basically ask, go to the hey, do you know anyone else out there? And in this case, it doesn't know anyone else. But in case the go to node here connects, um, the Go Liberty B node will ask the Rust Liberty B node, hey, do you know anyone else out here? And the Rust Liberty B server will actually tell the Go Liberty B laptop that there's also a Go Liberty B server. And this way they uh, slowly discover each other. And this is, for example, if you open the app, it will slowly more peers will actually pop up. And the more people here uh, open the app in their browser, um, your browsers will actually discover the network and this way discover the other browsers and then try to do uh, a WebRC direct connection, right? Do the hole punching. And in case that doesn't succeed, either relay or gossip the messages. Cool. Okay. Good. This sounds uh, fine for servers and and desktop browsers, but uh, it sounds very like heavy for mobile radio. Um, like this sounds like it would just burn battery mm -hmm. on mobile browsers. Um, so I I don't think like if you build a larger application with this, I don't think you should connect to everyone within the network. I don't think right. that makes sense, neither from a server nor from a browser. Okay. Within your protocols, you need to be somehow smart who to connect to. But um, for example, in the case of gossip sub, you can kind of like delegate the further gossiping as a browser to a server node where the server node has more connections and then can actually uh, have your message travel through the network. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is a common thing with uh, P2P chat applications. There's a few of them where they're, they're very bad for, for mobile experience because of the battery issue. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing here that would solve that magically, I guess. It's left as a exercise to the implementer? I, I, I'm pretty sure this chat application is yet, not yet ideal, and I don't think I have figured out the battery drain okay. feature, but I would argue that you could figure this out with like being more advanced around, for example, gossiping to the first hop, and then have that first hop gossip further. Yeah. But yeah, this is hard. This is hard space. Yeah. Just a quick answer to that. Um, you can think of Lipid2P as just adding some flavoring and around the connectivity to make it transport independent. Um, it should work like any normal HTTP system. So think of your browser on mobile uh, making requests. You can configure Lip2P applications to behave exactly the same way, and that way not cause that battery drain issue. Um, I think this might be about, in, say, Gossip Sub, creating a, a lightweight client that then wouldn't maintain that many open connections or would only connect to a specific relay or things like that. Um, and that's, a, that's the way of like, tuning that particular problem. Um, I also think in mobile specifically is where like BLE and other kind of near field communication things will be super, super useful because uh, there's all, you know, there's a classic problem. Of you you uh, have a phone, you have your laptop, uh, you don't have a Wi-Fi network, uh, you want to move some information from your phone to your, la to your laptop. And now these days, um, Apple and Google do this really, really well with their protocols, but peer-to-peer -peer hasn't caught up to that and like we need to close that gap. Um, and I think that would be that, that then you would actually be able to do this kind of like really nice magic link wormhole moving our information. 